Sa press con, ang kasalukuyang ginagawa ng Bureau of Internal Revenue, pakinggan po natin ito. As a basis for determining whether uh, she, he paid the right taxes. No? There were adjusted made to the south end based on documents gathered, which we start gathering from the in, when the impeachment started. No? So uh, there were unreported asset, under de, under declared asset, unreported cash. No? So all of these were included and determined what is it that his real net worth is for the end of a specific year. Out of this uh, evaluation, uh, there were discrepancy that was uh, found out. No? Based on his alpha, this his declared income is only 26.45 million, but his true net worth was 161.15 million. No? This network is based is not yet even complete. No? These are network that we have documents for. No? We have not yet. Uh, there are. There, there's an asset that has not been included here, which is some of his dollar account. Because uh, it seems like uh, former Chief Justice Corona, after executing a waiver, is now revoking that waiver to the bank secrecy law. So there were some dollar account that, was, that we were not able to get a certification for. So, uh, using the network method and comparing uh, the income against what uh, the assets, no? the deficiency we're going after him is as of now. This can go up. It's 120.5 million, inclusive of surcharge and interest, covering taxable year 2003, 2004, 2005, 2007, 2008, and 2010. The 203rd case we are filing is against Maria Carla Biafrisi Castillo for willful attempt to evade or defeat tax and for deliberate failure to file income tax return for taxable year 2010 in violation of Section 254 and 255 of the National Internal Revenue Code. Uh, this case also stemmed from the investiga impeachment investigation that was conducted and based on the document which we started gathering as a result of the impeachment, it was determined that as per the record of the Bureau of Internal Revenue, uh, she only declared a cumulative income of 228,040 pesos. However, he, she acquired a property in La Vista for 57 Maranao Street for 18 million for which he paid documentary stamp tax of 329,000. Uh, we use the expenditure method. No? For you to be able to spend 18 million, you should have earned through the years enough to pay for this 18 million. So uh, we're assessing her a deficiency income tax liability including surcharge interest of 9.93 million for taxable year 2010. The 122nd case is against Constantino T. Castillo III, the son-in-law of Chief Justice Corona, for willful attempt to evade or defeat tax for taxable year 2003 and 2009, for deliberate failure to file his income tax return for taxable year 2003, for willful failure to supply correct and accurate information in his ITR for taxable year 2009. Uh, our record shows that he, she, he had a total declared income from 2005 to 2009 of 1.93 million pesos. However, uh, and also based on our information, in 2003, he acquired a property in Molave Street, Project 3, Quezon City for 10.5 million. When he did not have any income reported during the prior to 2003. In 2009, he bought another property, 6 Kalayaan Avenue, Diliman, Quezon City, for which he paid 15 million. Uh, for you to earn 50, to pay for something for 15 million, you should be earning much, much more than that compared to the report, the income he reported of 1.93. So he bought the property in 2003, but he did not. He, had, he did not have any income tax return on year 2003. Despite the amount that we presume he earned because he was able to pay a 10.5 million. 
And then for 209, there's a deliberate uh, understatement in his ITR. So we also use the expenditure method. Um, so basically, we're trying, we're collecting tax liability from him of 20.24 million, broken down into 10.58 million in 2003 and 9.66 million in 2009. So basically, yeah, that's the three cases we're filing this morning. Um, one our 122nd, 123rd, and 124th case. Uh, if you um, have prior any... to filing of these charges, um, kinigan niyo ba? Kung baga parang kinigan niyo ba sila ng time to explain or paperwork? Uh, I remember when during the impeachment proceeding, right? Uh, the defense asked us whether we issued a letter of authority against them. We did. Right? So, I believe uh, if we say the impeachment is all the way to April, when I testify, no? April, May, June, July, August, we gave them ample time to uh, present their, their documents, no? but they did not. Ma'am, can you clarify if sinabi nyo na parang ni-revoke yung binigay ng waiver for the bank? Uh, when we because there was a bank, no? Banco de Oro. I think I can disclose this because this is a subject of a declaratory relief case in the RTC court in Makati. No? When we were asking for the bank certification from Banco de Oro, uh, they, their legal wrote us and said that the lawyer of J Chief Justice Corona said that Chief Justice Corona is revoking the waiver, no? So we were questioning that because the waiver was executed by the Chief Justice. And therefore, the only one who can revoke it is the Chief Justice. No? Uh, that's our argument with Banco de Oro. However, Banco de Oro brought us to court on a declarat declaratory relief asking the court whether they can legally give us the certification. And based on my last information, it seemed, and just Chief Justice Corona was asked to comment, and I believe based on the comment of Chief Justice Corona, he confirmed that he's revoking the, his, the waiver he executed. What want you? Yung check yung check yung sinabi ni Rene Bogo. Approximately, I cannot give you the example, two months ago? Yeah, yeah. More or less? Other month, yeah. One month or two months ago. June, June, you can... June, June, July. July. Actually, July, you can July. go July. July. You can look at the case in the RTC court of Mahati. It's a public document. It's, you can go to that court and get the documents. Ma'am, just to clarify you, you know, they were given the chance to reply to the When the procedure in the Bureau of Internal Revenue is we execute and we, if we're invest investigating somebody, no? we will issue a letter of authority. Uh, first, there are two ways we investigate. No? We can do a very thorough preliminary investigation, and then we execute, we issue a letter of authority so nobody can change the return. The LA is really so that nobody can change the return, no? so that uh, all the evidence are fixed. We can also, if based on our preliminary investigation, there are some uncertainty, we can give the letter of authority earlier and ask them to explain. Then from their explanation, we determine whether we will accept the explanation, whether the explanation can justify some of them so that it's not a criminal case and we will just assess, or despite the explanation, it is still a criminal case. So in the case of Chief Justice Corona and her and his uh, and his daughter, son-in-law, and the wife, we ex we issued the letter of authority April taho. Mm -hmm. no? And in the letter of authority, when you get a letter, it will tell you that you are being investigated by the Bureau of Internal Revenue for what taxes, what year, who are the people investigating you, what are the documents you have to submit. No? So basically. That's what uh, the letter of authority will tell you. Then you have you are given a number.